this week, we're going to be looking at the number four, which is the vertical. Number four is not going to mean anything to you if you haven't watched last week's video, because you're going to need the one, two, and three. And what we're going to do, guys, now is we're going to move on to number four. And that is a fully loaded system pushing off the ground, unloading and sequencing to swing that club with maximum speed. Now, you might be saying maximum speed could mean minimum control. But that's where we're going to look at how we are firing the orientation of the body when we're firing to influence your swing direction. So you can feel where the club's going before it even goes there. You can almost predetermine with your movement where it's going to go. Just the same way that if you were throwing a ball, you know your arm's going to go that way because you're moving this way and you're pushing off and you can feel, you're so familiar with it, you can feel the sequence and you just know how the body is organising itself to release the arm in that direction. If I'm going to throw a ball to you, I'm going to move this way. I'm not going to move that way and then try and throw a ball in your direction. It's going to feel really strange. I don't know why, I don't know how, it's just not going to be that efficient. So I don't need to know all the intrinsics and the detail don't need to know all that. Don't need to analyze this to the nth degree. I just need to know that this feels easier the closer I get into this place. I don't know the specifics of where I am. I don't know the exact sequence. I don't need to know. Fortunately, our system possesses the perfect GPS awareness to know exactly where it is at any moment in time. We've just got to put it in the right ballpark. And that's what we're going to do here. Hi guys, the GRF Travel Club is revisiting the Glory Resort. We're in Turkey from the 10th to the 15th of March. Four star venue, amazing courses, five nights, four days of coaching with myself and one of the GRF staff, plus on the course with our GRF tour player, Mark Foster. We've got six places, guys. Follow the link in the description and we look forward to seeing you there. So you start with the club behind the ball and you use the number one. You use a forward motion, let your club go with you. And then you can lead into a two and then a three. And this three is loading the system. We're still rotating using that transverse rotation of the upper torso. We're still rotating back as we shift into three, ready to spring. And it's this spring, the number four, that vertical force that's accessed by pushing off the ground that's going to fire this release pattern. So how do we feel it? Well, what I want you to do first is push the board to one side. And I hope you've got a board. I hope from last week you've made your own or you've got one of our systems. But you don't need to purchase a GRF system. I'm not selling systems. What I'm doing is trying to give good information to help you explore your movement potential and action as much of it as possible. So what I want you to do is put your lead leg forward, split your stance like a lunge. And I just want you to just flex your lead leg and then just let it naturally, as it flexes, fall inside the big toe. Now be careful, if you've had cartilage issues or you've got knee, knee issues, just be careful. We don't want to go too much. We want to do it within comfortable, easy ranges. And as you do this, let your left hip as a right-hander, lead hip here, let it just shift outside the foot. And that's going to load the ball of the foot. It's going to corkscrew you into the ground. And you're going to want to move your upper body. Look how the upper body responds. It rotates this way, which is kind of where our number three takes us. In fact, it's exactly where our number three takes us. The body wants to rotate to enable us to load into the ground. Look how the upper body's responding. So now you can recognize the reaction of the upper body to the intention of loading. It all starts to become familiar. If we were looking down at the golf ball, you'll notice the lead shoulder goes underneath the chin. So now we've got this left lateral flexion as a right-hander. It's all helping to load into the ground, ready for the spring. So this is giving us a real sense of where we can be ready for the big push-off. So this is the three, and the four will be a spring off the ball of the foot, the ball and the toe. And notice I'm not pulling, not trying to rotate. These rotations happen naturally. They're an active, Recoil, as soon as you push off, because you've tightly wound up the body, it's a tightly wound up spring, load into the floor, as soon as you trigger it from the ground, that elastic response takes over and the body starts to rotate towards the target. Of course, when we're stood in a golf stance and the club's swinging, everything's gonna start swinging, firing that way, 
but it's going to be sequenced from the ground. So we've got a feel for this load. How do we get the push off? What's it like to feel the push off? Well, we're going to do a little step drill. Very simple. Feet together, just swing the club in the air very comfortably, just using the wrists. And what you're going to do, you're going to take a little step with your lead foot as you swing the club back. Just about shoulder width. And notice I'm turning the foot in. Now be careful with your knee and your hip. This is something we're going to be just mindful of as we do this. We've got to be careful. But we just want to load the forefoot. We're going to load that big toe and we're going to turn it in. So for me as a right-hander with the lead foot, I'm turning it into say 130 and the heel is going to be off the floor. And that's to load the hip. That's to feel this active load. Heels off the floor, so I'm creasing the forefoot of the shoe and I'm loading the hip over the ankle. Just sidestepping and letting myself drop. Now what we're also gonna just explore is this rotation here, let the body rotate. So you can do this without the club first if you want to and just put your trail hand on your sternum and just feel that rotation. And then when you feel comfortable, as you turn away, instantaneously you drop. So you're getting a simultaneous load into the ground as you rotate away, which stretches the body muscularly as you load into the floor. So we're just separating the upper body rotation with the movement of the lower body. So with the club in your hands, it's gonna feel a bit more restricted now, that's fine. And you don't have to force it. Oh, trying to make a big turn, big rotation, big high hands, high arc, big arc. Just let yourself move naturally. Now, when you've got comfortable with that, we're gonna spring into a finish off both feet. So both four feet are gonna be involved. Just watch this one. So everyone's going to do it different. You don't have to jump off the floor. I just want you to experience unweighting. Just letting your body weight push off the floor so you don't feel any load into the floor. If you can just do a little jump, that's unloading. We just want some of that. Some do it more than others. Not necessarily better to jump off the floor. We just want to feel unweighting. And then with that unweighting, the body sequences. And it contributes now to that snap. You'll hear the snap or the swish after the unload. So it's only a split second. We're talking hundreds per second, but you're gonna sense it. You're gonna sense how this movement contributes to that release. Once we've done that, we can actually hit balls with this exercise. Just at kind of 70%, 60, 70% with a seven iron, eight iron, just to feel what it's like to just load and unload and then strike the ball just after the unload. A lot of people are still loaded into the floor as they hit the ground. So if we take that for example here with the ball, I'm just going to take a stance to the ball, ball in its normal place and then I'm going to bring the, my lead foot back towards my trail foot. So now the ball's kind of opposite my lead foot and feel that release. Now that was early, but I've got some feedback. I caught the mat before the ball and I could feel myself push off, tilt back and I released early. So I'm just gonna let myself drop a little bit more. I'm gonna go in more into my lead side. I was kind of hanging back a bit. So I'm gonna take my stance and go again. Still a little bit early with the hit but I'm getting feedback. So I'm gonna go again. A bit better, still a bit of early release. So I know where I am at this moment in time. I've got a bit of an early release. I'm feeling the unweighting of that push off, but I'm just releasing it a bit early. That's okay. Better. So I can still feel a bit early with my release. That's fine. 
Some people won't. Some people are going to feel it really late. Some people are going to feel a much later snap. At the minute, mine's a little bit early. That's fine. That's my tendency, as is the case with most of us. When we use the board and bring that back in, we can start to feel this with our one, two, three, four. Starting on the trail leg in this starting position, we've got a one, the forward press. We've got a two, we've got the three, and we've got the push off four. And then we're gonna feel, hopefully, the strike nanoseconds after the four. One, two, three, four. And I felt that a little bit early. Bit clean, not too bothered about that. It's the timing of it. One, two, three, four. So I'm just feeling a bit early. I'm gonna drop into my three a little bit more. What I mean by that is the three is gonna be lengthened time-wise. I'm gonna move into that three for a bit longer. So it's a one, two, three, four. Think of it like that. One, two, three, four. Not one, two, three, four. It's going to be one, two, three, four. Totally different. Totally different in how that felt. And I can do it better. That's not perfect by any stretch. I am absolutely not the perfect model for this. But it's helping me recognise where I can go. Because these are awareness exercises. Nobody's perfect. We're not expecting to make perfect form. It's the function. As long as we're accessing more of our capability and applying it through the awareness that these exercises are creating, they're attuning us to our movements, we can develop and improve, we can get better. That's all it's about. I'm gonna make a longer three. I'm gonna go deeper into three. How do I go deeper into three? I continue to rotate back. Look how low this gets me. I'm not trying to go down. This is a big mistake people make. They try and drop and go down. The drop, guys, is the rotation back. That's the drop. And the pop, whew, that's the push off, that's the four. So your three and four is the drop and pop to access that free flowing sequence. So it's one, two, three, four. That's better. A bit late on my extension, I can feel that. This is what's gonna happen. You're gonna start getting feedback from how you move and you're gonna to start to recognize how you can organize this yourself by just tweaking it a little bit. I'm gonna get a bit more responsive with my four. One, two, three, four. Very different immediately. That felt a little bit more like my step. So I can step back, feel that, get back on, and I feel like I'm on something, onto something here, but we all have that feeling and we're hoping it sticks, I'm gonna go again. Hopefully I get the same shot, I get the same feeling. But now I'm in a completely different state to how I achieved it with the previous swing. I'm, I'm applying a different process. I'm trying to recall something I've done and just recreate it. Instead of just going through the same process. One, two, three, four. And a much more active four. I've gone through the same process. I got a decent result again. So this is not just a tutorial, guys, on the exercise, the number four, the pushing off. It's also just a little insight into how you can apply yourself when you're practicing to get the best out of your practice. So you're not constantly beating yourself up, trying to get all your ducks in a row every single time, hit the perfect shot, and only giving yourself a handful of opportunities before you change your train of thought and try and think of another tip or watch another video, and you think, I'm gonna do something different because that's not working. We very quickly discard things. and We've never given ourselves an opportunity to actually have time just to immerse ourselves, develop some level of awareness so we can start to become a bit intuitive with it, a bit exploratory, challenge ourselves, just like the golf course is going to do. So think about how you're not just performing on the range, but behaving and how that gets the best out of your exercises. And remember, one, two, three, four.